Glory be to the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, today, and forevermore, I hope you all are doing well by the grace of our trained God. Let us turn our attention to God's Word. Turn with me to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. Most assume when they sing this phrase as a song that even when they came near a fig tree and see no fruits, they will be rejoice. God will provide. But that is not what Habakkuk is referring to. A great startling message is conveyed in the book of Habakkuk. So I I would like to this time to uh, took it me through a quick tour through the book of Habakkuk. We don't know much about the prophet Habakkuk. Uh, no other books in the Bible directly refer his name. Uh, some scholars assume that the Elisha raised the uh, son of Shulamite woman. Uh, some scholars assume that uh, Habakkuk is the one whom Elijah uh, raised back to life, but we are not sure. No introductory information is given in this book. Saul was the king of the uni, first king of the unified Israel, then David came to the throne, after that Solomon, after Solomon, the unified is, uh, kingdom of Israel was divided into the north and southern kingdom. The northern kingdom had uh, fallen to Assyria in BC 722, that is the 10 out of 12 tribes. The remaining two tribes had completely fallen into the hands of Babylonian kingdom in 586 BC. The siege started in 606 BC, then in 586 the uh, temple of Jerusalem was completely uh, torn into ashes. Habakkuk wrote to the southern kingdom a time when Babylonian kingdom is arising, rising to its zenith. Uh, scholars assume that uh, Habakkuk wrote uh, this book uh, in between 606 or 605 BC. So he might have witnessed the fall of uh, the southern kingdom of Israel into the hands of Babylonian empire, just like Jeremiah witnessed. Jeremiah is the contemporary of uh, uh, prophet Habakkuk. God has warned to southern kingdom over again and again and again through prophets. If you commit the same sin, if you violate the commandments of God, you will also be taken into captivity. Just like your brothers, just like the northern kingdom, you will also be taken into captivity. But the people of southern kingdom did not heed to the voice of God. They continued in their idolatry. They continued in their lustful life. They are doing all sorts of things that defame the name of the Lord. That bring anger to, the, anger to God. So, God was in a state to punish the Jewish people. Everywhere there is violence, bloodshed, corruption. The prophet witness those things and he cries to God this is the a personal letter a emotional book he wages war with God he prays to God 
why god you are allowing this sorts of evil things to happen the first part of the first chapter is a q and a session between habakkuk and god can someone read for me verse 1 to 3 can someone read for me verses 1 to 3 of the book of habakkuk there is an another way to read this phrases so that you can grasp the original emotional meaning behind the words of habakkuk the burden which habakkuk the prophet did see he did not start with a flattering introduction i a prophet from israel so and so nothing he ja- directly jumps into the situation oh lord how long shall i cry and thou will not hear even cry out unto thee of violence and thou will not save why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me and there are that rise of strife and contention the society is filled with evil the jewish people are going wayward and opposing god and his words he asks questions about the wickedness of the jewish people the law is lack and judgment that never go forth for the wicked that compass about the righteous therefore wrong judgment proceeded lord there is no room for right judgment in this land are you watching this are you silent on this you are a holy one of israel that phrase is repeated again and again and again god gives him a startling reply god responds starting from verses 5 to 11 here god speaks behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously for i will work a work in your days which ye will not believe though it be told you For lo I raise up the Chaldeans and that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land and to possess their dwelling places that are not theirs they are terrible and dreadful their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves then their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far they sh- shall fly as the eagle that hasted to eat they shall come f- all for violence their faces shall sup up as the east wind and they shall gather the captivity as the sand and they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be as corn unto them they shall deride every strong horde for they shall heap dust and take it then shall his mind change and he shall pass over and often imputing his power unto his god god made a startling reply to habakkuk verse why he says for i will work a work in your days and wonder marvelously i know the iniquity which is going in the land of juda i know the sins which are committed by the people i know the contention i know the spoiling i know the violence i am going to raise up chaldeans that is the babylonian empire he goes on to god goes on to speak about the terribleness of the babylonian nation no one can stand before them they shall fly as the eagle that hasted to eat come fall for violence they shall gather the captivity as the sand god said in verse 5 it will be a surprise which he will not believe prophet jeremiah is already warning repent repent but people 
we are living a joyful life no god will not use gentiles to punish us even though he may directly intervene through the nature god will never use an another nation against us because his holy temple is in our side the temple of jerusalem did not belong to the northern kingdom but belong to our kingdom so god will never demolish that temple god will never ever allow to demolish that temple even though we may walk against the precepts and commandments of god god said that will be a surprise then verse 6 to 11 he goes on to speak about the fierceness of babylon so what do you think is the proper habakuk content that is what i am expecting lord do it swiftly jona when he proclaimed the message of judgment to the words the assyrian kingdom he waited for god to punish them when god was silent he became angered i know already but what is the case here from 12 to 20 the second q and a session the q and a session did not end there then habakuk again starts art thou now from everlasting o lord my god my holy one you are the holy one we shall not die o lord thou hast ordained them for judgment and o mighty god thou hast established them for correction thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal deal treacherously and hold us thy tongue when they when they wicked devour the man that is more righteous than he and make us man as the fishes of the sea and as the creeping things that have no ruler over them they take up all of them with the angle they catch them in their net and they gather them in their drag and therefore they rejoice and are glad therefore they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag because they by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous shall they therefore empty thy net and not spare continuously to slay the nations the prophet is confused lord i asked your people you are the one to discipline them you are the one to correct them in second samuel chapter 7 he promised to david that your offspring your kingdom shall be everlasting kingdom there will be no end for your kingdom but now you are saying that the babylonian i will bring the babylonian chaldeans to punish jewish nation lord this is too much i did not expect this much from you i just wanted you to chastise them but this is too much not only that the babylonian empire the chaldeans are way more wicked than jewish people how could you do that they are way more wicked corrupted in their ways they are more selfish they are filled with pride verse 15 they take up all of them with the angle they catch them in their net and gather them in their drag he alludes with the uh, nature of fishing the act of fishing he catches he does not think about anyone he does not glorify god verse 16 he says they sacrifice unto their net and they burn incense unto their drag lord chaldeans are not worshiping you they are not going to give honor and glory to you they are filled with pride they burn sacrifice burn incense unto their drag lord you are holy one heart of pure arise than to behold evil why sometimes we are confused just like the prophet abakuk why god is allowing these things why god is allowing more wicked people to prosper at a particular time in a nation lord you are a just god 
you are omnipotent you are omniscient you know everything you know what is right you can punish you can chastise our people directly because you are our king but why you bring a more wicked and corrupt nation you know o lord about the nature of chaldeans why did god replied chapter 2 god replied in long 20 verses he gave a startling reply to habakkuk what did he do verse 1 i will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what i shall answer when i reproved he went above the tower watch tower and he is waiting for lord to answer him lord i want to know the answer so that i may proclaim that answer to that people to my people you are the holy one of israel why i want to know as a prophet who follows the commandments of the god i wanted the precepts and commandments of lord to be followed in my nation but that is not happening here so i ask you but this is way too much i want a good answer or else i will not get down from here what did the lord do was to and the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon the table that he may run that it you do one thing you write the vision write everything which i am going to say to you it is urgent write it that he may run that read at it everyone should read that it will certainly come to pass verse three for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry i am going to do a marvelous thing it will not happen all of a sudden tomorrow write it write everything everything a jot and a tittle everything will come to pass write it that is also this verse is also reflected in new testament god will certainly bring to pass everything that he had promised and that he had proclaimed and what he says was for and for the wickedness of babylon god says i know their wickedness you don't have to teach me behold his soul which is lifted up it's not upright in him but the just shall live by his faith the just shall live by his faith his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him i know the pride heart of the chaldeans the just shall live by faith this verse is spoken three times in the new testament the book of romans chapter 1 galatians uh, chapter 3 and hebrews chapter 10 i believe the just shall live by faith abraham believed in god and it was counted for him in righteousness i know who are all the real believers i know who are all those who have pride in their heart i know each and every human being rich or poor small or large young or old small village or a great empire that just shall live by faith that's why he also because he transgresseth by wine he is a proud man neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire of hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied but gather unto him all nations and heapeth to unto him all people first he spoke speaks about the wickedness of the chaldeans he is a proud man enlargeth his desire as hell 
cannot be satisfied gather unto him all nations heap up unto him all people god says i know everything starting from verse 6 and until verse 20 god proclaims five woes to the chaldeans the first woe verse 6 to 8 god promises even though babylon will become a superpower that has not happened yet babylonian kingdom is just arising the assyrian empire is fading but god proclaims he will have his zenith but i will punish him write this it will surely come to pass first oh god says his wealth is taken away verse 6 to 8 shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say oh to him that increaseth that which is not how long and to him that lad himself with thick clay shall not shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and wake that shall vex thee and thou shall be for booty sent to them because thou hast spoiled many nations and the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land and of the city and of the dwell therein i will take away your wealth the wealth of babylonians of chaldeans will be taken away this is why their heart is filled with pride i have everything i have taken everything everything shall be a booty unto me no no one can escape my hand god is god has proclaimed the first woe then the second woe verse 9 to 11 what they build will itself cry for judgment or to him that covereth an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his net on high that he may be delivered up from the power of evil thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off against many people and have sins against my soul for the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it your possessions itself will cry for judgment god will not overlook any sin made against him every sin is a sin against made against the holy creator of this universe may it be babylonians assyrians it doesn't matter whoever lifts his personality and name above the name of god will be seriously dealt with and third woe fire will consume their labor verse 12 to 14 woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and established a city by iniquity i am repeating that phrase woe to him that buildeth a town with blood because when they are going to capture the southern kingdom the countless souls will be killed a river of river of blood is going to flow will god forget that no god will repay Behold, it is not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the very people shall weary themselves for vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. Habakkuk, do not be mistaken. You might fear that, O oh Lord, what about the promise made to David? Will you completely wipe out our people? No. one thing you have you and i have to understand that every judgment made by god towards his people is restorative judgment not annihilating judgment god will chastise his people but he will not completely destroy them habakkuk is feared he says he thinks in his heart 
if so our babylonians going to will the entire earth with their bloodshed and violence jews are not doing that jews are not crossing their borders and committing serious sins against other people babylonians are not like that lord is this how this world is going to end god promises no for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the waters covers the sea babylonians chaldeans will not fill the entire world but my glory will fill the entire universe verse 15 to 17 in the fourth woe evil will come upon them which do evil verse 15 to 17 oh to them him that giveth his neighbor drink that puttest thy bottle to him and make us him to drunken also that thou mayest look on the nakedness the what filled the shame for glory thou drink thou also and let thy foes skin be uncovered the cup of the lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory for the violence of lebanon shall cover thee and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood and for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein i will repay you you drink also give this neighbor drink and put thy bottle to him you are committing greater sins by giving his neighbor drinketh make us him drunken also the sin of drunkenness they are filled with sin of drunkenness god will repay you for that and the fifth woe finally the chaldeans are committing every kinds of sins unlike the other empires they don't have a policy they make their own policy according to their lusts that is their policy if they wanted a person to be burnt alive a city to be burnt uh, uh, inhabitants of a city to be burnt alive that is what they will do what is their faith based on their faith is based on idols god finally touches that verse 18 to 20 what profit at the grave an image that the maker thereof hath graven it the molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted there into dumb idols woe unto the him that saith to the wood awake to the dumb stone arise it shall teach behold it is laid over with gold and silver and there is no breath at all in the midst of it but the lord in his holy temple let all the earth keep silence before him the babylonians have gold and silver they have plenty of gold you can make idols but there is no breath at all in the midst of it but the lord in his holy temple you cannot keep the holy god of israel inside a temple heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool god will certainly repay that a long reply he asked a short question god gave a long reply even habakkuk may have not noticed all these things he may, he may not aware of these all these things because babylonians have not yet arrived personally stepped foot personally into the land of israel because only by 586 the temple of jerusalem was thrown into pieces made to heaps and ashes this is written uh, 20 years earlier he had heard many things habakkuk had heard many things about the chaldeans but god have a has a thorough and complete knowledge of past and present and future of every nation in every tribe and every ethnic group his wisdom is unmatchable the startling phrase here is the just shall live by faith even though i may allow the babylonians first to punish my people i know how to protect the remnant the just shall live by faith that is the key phrase there is a remnant that is crying to god day and night for god to 
cleanse the nation god will certainly do that and he certainly knows how to protect his own remnant no one has to teach him no one has to say lord there is a person who loves you the chaldeans are going to slay him lord are, are have you forgotten him no no one has to teach the lord and in chapter 3 is habakkuk again asking questions to god no he is singing a song third chapter a prayer of habakkuk the prophet upon shigiyonath shigiyonath is a tune no one knows what kind of tune it is but many scholars assume that is a emotional tune some say it is a musical instrument we don't know uh, seventh psalm is also uh, said to be uh, tuned in shigiyonath what he says verse 1 and 2 he first request to god o lord i have heard thy speech and i was upright o lord revive the work in the midst of the years and in the midst of the years made known in wrath remember mercy god o lord revive let your work be revived in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy in midst of your wrath let your mercy be upon us in verses uh, 3 to 15 he draws a remarkable song a theophany he is using a literary device called a theophany god in human terms to describe the judgment of god and deliverance of god was 3 and 4 god came from teman and from the holy one from mount paran shela his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise and his brightness was as the light he had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power you may think how could horns proceed out of the hand of god did god have a hand god is spirit this is proclaiming god in human terms he is using human terminology otherwise we couldn't understand the ways and precepts of god god came from teman he came from the east to on one hand to give judgment and on another hand to secure his people and his brightness was as the light like a shining sun he would rise up and he verses 5 to 11 uh, he equates the judgment of god parallels with natural disasters before him when the pestilence burning coals went forth at his feet he stood and measured the earth he beheld and drove asunder the nation and the everlasting mountains were scattered and the perpetual hills did bow his ways are everlasting i saw the tents of kushan and the affliction and the curtains of the land of median did tremble was the lord displeased against the rivers was thy anger against the rivers was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon the horses and the chariots of salvation thy bow was made quite naked according to the words of the tribes even thy word selah thou didst cleave the earth with rivers the mountains saw thee and they trembled the over flowing of the water passed by the deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high he creates the judgment of god with natural disasters then he turns to national disasters verse 12 to 15 thou didst march through the land in indignation thou didst thrust the heathen in the anger thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people even for the salvation with thine anointed thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck thou didst strike through the staves and head of these villages they came out of the world will to scatter me their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses through the heap of great waters when i heard my belly trembled when the judgment was approaching when the darkness was approaching when habakkuk hears the news that babylonians are in your nation have stepped foot in the land of judea prophet says when i heard my belly trembled 
my lips quivered at the voice rottenness entered into my bones and i trembled in myself that i might rest in the day of trouble when he cometh up to the people he will invade them with his troops when we sometimes feel the wrath of god poured into the nations because we are failed human human beings human beings because we are human beings we shall also tremble but what is the promise verse 60 verse 17 let us read that again although the fig tree shall not blossom why when the babylonians arrive into the land of juda they will destroy everything every wealth the wealth from the trees the wealth from the land the grains flock everything they will destroy completely so that people the remnant the those who are not killed may die of starvation that is the policy of chaldeans they had, they had done that when they arrived they had turned the nation into heaps and ashes god did not say no but habakkuk no even though a time will come when the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls this statement everyone is going to make when the babylonians arrive and they were fear and tremble but the ones who fear god and the ones who love god what will they say yet on one hand there is fear my belly trembled on human perspective but yet i will rejoice in the lord i will joy in the god of my salvation he will protect me he will secure me god knows what to do if god is allowing something to enter into my life enter into my nation enter into my territory on one side it may seem that if it enters nothing will remain god knows everything here is where we have to trust god apart from our situations he closes this book with a startling statement the lord god is my strength and he will make my feet like like hind feet and he will make me to walk upon my high in high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments the first chapter o oh lord why 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 crying but he closes this book with to the chief singer on my string instrument play the instrument who is the singer where is the choir master play this i have composed a song on one hand our life may be filled with sorrows we may have unanswered questions we may ask god why god why is this happening why is that happening but sometimes god may make you know the purpose of what he is doing sometimes he may not even if he may not reveal his purposes we can cling on to the promises of god he is my salvation even though the fig tree shall not blossom no fruit in the vines olive shall fail field shall lay no meat flock shall cut off every source of income and blessing was closed but god is open to me can you make that statement that is what we you and i are supposed to be meditating in times of distress in times of judgment can i say i will rejoice in the lord who can say that not everyone can say that who can say that 
verse 2 chapter 2 and verse 4 but the just shall live by his faith where is our faith are we longing for the justice of god ways of god god will never ever forget his people that is the message of habakkuk there is one message every year you have plenty of olive plenty of herd of sheep and flocks that is not the greatest thing the greatest thing is even though nothing remains i can stand because my god is with me he is the rock of my salvation the just shall live by faith alone habakkuk wrote that and proclaimed to his people first the judeans went into captivity but when you read in daniel chapter particularly in chapter 5 you know that god punished the babylonians mene mene teke pasin in a single night chaldeans lost their kingdom i don't have the, didn't have the time to expound that but god did that but one blessing i want to close this sermon with one blessing which god did for the jewish people god did not completely eradicate the jewish people he chastised them for 70 years that is for his own purposes but after the babylonian captivity the idol worship from judah was completely banished until today there is no idol worship in the land of judah even in the time of david they worshiped negustan only in the period of Isaiah, that was dealt with but after the babylonian captivity god had banished the idol worship completely god has his own purposes so let us pray lord I will believe on you even if there were, there were no resources. Nothing, no one, even if no one stands with me, if you are with me, nothing will stand against me.